In setting up the focus for issues and crisis management, we have focused on the high level process aspects of issues management, but then focused on stakeholders and more meaningfully understanding stakeholders as a necessary precursor to actually doing issues management. So this lecture will represent our last conceptual focus on stakeholders before launching into the issues management process. However, the purpose of the lecture is to focus on the re stakeholder relationship model. This is my model and has certainly been influenced by a lot of theory and research, but in tests of the model, it's really helpful to explain what works and what doesn't work in terms of managing increasingly intense problems and concerns for organizations. But its grounding comes from an advertising model that I came across about 10, 15 years ago that I thought really made sense from a communication and persuasion perspective. So in this lecture, I'll talk about advocacy advertising and then introduce and discuss the SRM model itself. Eric Haley was interested in understanding how consumers reacted to advocacy advertising, that is, advertising that focuses on causes and not necessarily just product-based advertising. He was interested in the stakeholder perspective and how stakeholders reacted to different types of messages. He initially identified three perceptions in the context of advertising. First, the perception of the organization and the self, arguing that a central component of the consumer's understanding of advocacy message was their perception of the relationship between the organization and the consumer. On the whole, consumers evaluated organizations as good organizational sponsors of advocacy messages if the organization was recognizable and likable, understood the consumer, and shared common values with the consumer. Second, perception of the organization and perception of, th of the issue. The relationship between the company and the advocacy issue itself was a major dimension in consumers' understanding of advocacy advertising. Four themes were evident to describe this dimension, logical association, expertise, personal investment, and intent. And finally, the perception of the issue and self. The third dimension central to consumers' understanding of advocacy messages was the relationship between the issue and the consumer. Four dominant themes that emerged to describe that relationship were the importance of the issue to self, the importance of issue to society, the, the notion that a consumer's action could help, or that nobody could help. I like to think of this as the love triangle in public relations because there's always more to show stakeholders, no matter who they are, and organizations as they relate to one another. So in drawing from Haley's work, my own started with this very straightforward set of relationships. This model really focuses on the stakeholders' perspective and trying to understand that perspective. The reason for this is simple. It's in an organization's interest to plan its communication activities around its stakeholders. So beginning with a good understanding of the stakeholder perspective will help organizations inside and outside of crises to better understand the communication needs of their particular stakeholders. So let's get more specific about the definitions. When I'm talking about the organization there at the top, obviously we're going to be talking about a specific organization the one that we work for, the one that we study, even the one that we advocate against. Second, stakeholders. At the most basic level, researchers talk about stakeholders as individuals or groups that have or believe they have some vested interest in the work the organization does. This means that stakeholders, as we've talked about, can include a wide range of people and groups, like employees, shareholders, government agencies, consumers, and even advocacy groups. Stakeholders certainly don't always have to like the organization, but there is a perceived relationship from the stakeholder perspective. Third, issues. Now, this is a broad category, admittedly, but this is really about the substance of what binds organizations and stakeholders together. So in this case, issues can represent products or services from the organization, but it can also represent topics that stakeholders care about. Maybe it's health, maybe it's the environment, maybe something else. What's critical for the model is that the stakeholder believes there is a direct and clear connection between the organization and the issue. From there, 
the question about how connected they are to the issue also becomes relevant. Think about the issues like the baggage that come with a relationship. If we think about this in terms of normal human relationships, it can sometimes be a bit easier. For example, in a romantic relationship, partners will bring with them a lot of preconceptions about what romantic relationships are about, but also what happened from their previous relationships, as well as a set of life-related things that matter to them. One common challenge in romantic relationships, for example, is money. Couples regularly argue over money-related issues, and that gets actually cited as one of the most common reasons for relationships ending. So as an issue, it influences the way they see themselves, their partner, and the health of their relationship. If we connect this back to organizations, then it's easy to see that judgments about organizations aren't just about whether we like their product, services, policies, customer service, and so on, but it's also about judgments that we make about what the organization stands for, as well as its actions and behaviors. So let's dig into each of these components of the relationship in a bit more depth. Since we're talking about issues, let's start with the relationship between organizations and issues. Stakeholders make judgments about organizations and their connections to the issues based on a number of factors. Now, Research is still identifying all of these factors, but these six are the ones that have emerged across a large body of research, multiple authors, books, journal articles, all in the last 10 to 15 years. Remember, each of these represent a judgment from the stakeholder's perspective about the nature of the relationship between the organization and the issue. This means that there could be a very different judgments for, very, for different issues or types of issues. First, Blame or responsibility attribution comes to us from attribution theory and focuses, as you'd expect, on the degree to which a stakeholder believes that the organization has control over the issue. The more responsibility the stakeholder attributes to the organization, the more they are likely to ascribe definitive expectations on the organization related to that issue. Second. Competence asks whether or not the stakeholders believe the organization actually has the capacity to address the issue. Third, positive intention, concern, and commitment all represent value judgments from the stakeholders about their belief that the organization is actually interested in addressing the issue. Implied in these factors is also an assumption from the stakeholders about the value they think the organization places on those affected by the organization. In this case, this is where hygiene motivation theory comes into play. Take a look at the references section in the additional resources for more on this, but suffice to say that judgments in the authenticity of an organization's motivation are vitally important. Fourth, Finally, a clear association also matters. If stakeholders believe there is a clear association between the issue and the organization's core business or mission, then it's also important. In the case of corporate social responsibility, for example, if an organization does work that's and CSR work that's directly related to their core business or their core mission, then it yields more benefits. Likewise, in the stakeholder relationship model, when stakeholders see a clear association between an organization and an issue, it's certainly an issue that the organization has to be monitoring. Now, from an issues management or crisis management perspective, the more intensely stakeholders feel connected to issues, the more likely those issues are going to trigger them into action. Yet in issues and crisis research, this relationship is one that's only beginning to get a proper level of research attention with, and with researchers like Yan Jin really focusing on stakeholder emotion and how that affects reactions to crises. These relationships, though, have been long established in the research related to persuasion, psychology, and even learning theory. For example, Albert Bandura's research on efficacy has fundamentally shaped the way that we think about how people react to new information, changes in behavior, and the like. So while each of these attitudinal factors is relatively new to the field of issues and crisis management, they have been well established in other areas of communication and social psychology disciplines, including with multi-million pound campaigns.
So it's really important that social campaigns, um, we've seen those used, these kinds of attitude connections used to build successful social campaigns to change people's lives, um, built off of these theories. So all of these concepts are used in theories like the theory of reasoned action, theory of planned behavior, social learning theory, the elaboration likelihood model, and the extended parallel process model. That's why it makes sense to include them when we're talking about these kinds of relationships. They predict how people will react to messages and to situations. Finally, when we consider the relationship between the organization and the stakeholder, this has long been the domain of public relations work, and so there's a strong body of research, theory, and practice related to these concepts. Some authors in public relations, like Tim Coombs, argue that it's a mistake to think about public relations as relationship management because it invokes too much related to interpersonal relationship building. In part, he has a point that the relationship between stakeholders and organizations is different from how we as individuals build and maintain relationships because there are different outcomes of those relationships and certainly different purposes. However, the relationship metaphor is still the best metaphor for public relations because it focuses on the challenging dynamics of negotiating personal and other interests to see what the dyad has in common, cares about, and how it feels about one another. Moreover, across research related to PR, branding, and broader research all across corporate communications, we find these concepts related to reputation and loyalty describe what can go right or wrong in organizational stakeholder relationships. At the same time, our understanding of all of them is constantly developing with a lot of new research in the last several years shedding light on this complex and, and very interesting type of relationship. Once we understand the nature of the relationships between organizations, issues, and stakeholders, then we can begin crafting targeted and specific messaging that should help the organization not only manage the relationships better, but issues as well. So there are a few things about messaging that I want to point out. Most of the research related to the broad field of communication suggests for messages to be effective, not only do they need to target particular groups to whom we're communicating, this means they need to be culturally and situationally appropriate, but increasingly they need to be delivered on platforms that make sense for particular groups. For example, since 2006, the focus on different platforms has grown substantially, and now there are more than 125 analyses of different aspects of social media and crisis alone. However, one of the critical arguments that I make is that messages also have to appeal to the particular relationship factor affected by the intersection of the issue, the organization, and the stakeholder. For example, Messaging for men from about 30 to 40 years old about their favorite brand should really be different if the problem was reputational versus the target audience confidence in using the product successfully. This is something we target in persuasive campaigns all the times, but tends to be ignored in issues and crisis communication. Finally, it's also important that the messages themselves be appealing and always aligned to specific and measurable objectives, just like in any good campaign. Finally, we come to some of the outcomes. Now, there are a lot of potential outcomes. However, the literature talks about three broad types of outcomes in the issues and crisis management communication process. First, what is the stakeholder going to do with the, to the organization and the situation? So we identify stakeholder behavioral intention. Second, we know that people are less likely to trust organizations and media sources about organizations and events. However, we also know that they trust people they know and other opinion leaders outside organizations and mainstream media. So the question of word of mouth is absolutely vital today, even more so than at any point in the past. So what people are likely to say about both the organization and an issue is an important one to ask in terms of outcomes. Finally, beyond word of mouth, what are stakeholders going to do about the issue and organization? Will they advocate? Seek more information? Will they share the information that they find? Will they reach out? Knowing how stakeholders are likely to follow up and with whom is also useful to know ahead of time. 
then, like I said, there are loads of possible outcomes. The outcomes themselves will depend on strategic objectives that an organization has or ways they can be affected, but they also depend on the stakeholders in question, so these get defined as an organization goes along. But there is also a recursive element to this process. The outcomes always loop back to inform the future relationship between the stakeholder, organization, and issues. This becomes the new relationship and the new normal. Now, don't hesitate to get in contact with me if you have any questions, but I would definitely recommend to take a look at the resources.